Hello and welcome back to WA Real. I'm your host, Bryn Edwards. WA Real follows the oldest form of learning, that of listening to the stories and experience of those around us. Now, why is that? Because when we explore those stories and deeply contemplate them, we can find out who we truly are. Today, I have the real privilege of speaking to someone whose work I've been following for quite some time. He's the head, one of the, the head coach at Wake Up Warrior, Mr. Fat Sam Falstaffi. Welcome to WA Real. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. Now, quick question. Um, you're over in California. What's it like over there in this crazy coronavirus world? Uh, it's, it's quiet. It's quiet, but it's uh, sunny and beautiful. The nature, uh, just I assume, uh, down in Australia is very similar. It's beautiful outside, but it's quiet. And uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite sad in a way. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty similar here. So for those who may not have heard of the Wake Up Warrior movement, can you just give me a brief insight into what it focuses on? Yeah, definitely. Wake Up Warrior was a men's only training program started about seven years ago. Garrett J. White is the founder of the program, initially started about with 12 men trying to uh, implement a system to have it all, have it all in relationship with wife and kids and business and as well as uh, body and spirituality and make sure that you don't sacrifice one for another. Um, that turned into a movement of 50,000 plus men today with a number of books, audios, apps, and programs out there today that is helping men, specifically business married men, um, to make better decisions every single day. Yeah. And certainly I'll be honest, I have the warrior book here, which I bought last year and it's, um, Nothing short of fucking insightful. <laughs> yes, sir. Indeed. So just before we jump into today's thing, what, why is this important to you, Sam? I understand uh, listening to your story that um, I think you were one of the earliest people to go through Warrior Week and you quite quickly decided you wanted to be the head coach and uh, you made that happen. Well, I mean, uh, the story, it wasn't... Um... I mean, I came across the, uh, the message about uh, seven, years, seven years ago myself. And at that time, I was in the oil and gas industry and I was uh, having my own company, running my own company and had a, had a story uh, around uh, my identity. And that was, uh, you know, when I make enough money, then I will be much, much more present at home. I remember I carried that story for years with me. Yeah, It's kind of like it's been the focus of my my entire adult life has been to uh, to be able to provide at a certain level that I that I that I identified as being successful, and the idea was when I would reach that level, then I would be worthy to give it all to my family. Uh, meanwhile, I need to grind and I need to hustle and I need to work. And that was a story that that I had in mind for many many years. And when I came across the message of uh, Warrior, it was basically a, an, an opportunity to question that story, uh, which I didn't want to, obviously, a massive amount of resistance and holding on to that story because it was the only story I knew. And throughout the, the process of uh, trusting, first of all, the, the process that I walked into and uh, literally uh, paying attention to some of the details that I did not in the past, I discovered that uh, that story was not true was not true for me and it was not serving me. And I looked into a new story that empowered me. And as I did, I started shedding my identity. I was no longer associated with the man that I knew in the past 37 years or so. And, uh, and that brought me where I am today. I, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know that, you know, today I'll be here speaking to you and be leading about 50,000 men across the world. Uh, that was not my intention. In fact, I didn't know anything about coaching or guiding or training another man yet. I didn't know anything about it. I was completely uh, biased by it when I woke in. I just decided to change the story and change my identity. And uh, I found this to be the path and I pursued it. And here we are today. Yeah. And right now I can see so many people having their identity and their death grip on reality, as I call it, and, and that being challenged in these times. 100%. I think uh, human momentum is being put on pause and it's an opportunity for us to look back and uh, number one, uh, be grateful with what we had. 
right? Fuck what we had was great. The fact that at this time, when you and I are speaking, million of people were able to dance. Million of people were able to sit down and, and eat and have a meal. Million of people were able to play some kind of sports, group sports. Uh, like literally, human movement has been put on pause as we speak. And so what we can do, the only thing we can do at this point is to reflect back and say, we are grateful what we had. And that should fuel us to move forward and ask yourself a better question, now what? Now how do we move forward? Yes, this is a temporary pause, but as we come back, will we go back to the ways we had before? Or this period of reflection is gonna allow us to operate differently? Will we idolize the, the, the fame and, and money as we did before, or we actually recognize true talents in the front line that are helping people live today. Uh, there is a lot of reflection on what we've created. It's not anyone to blame, but what we have created. And I think, uh, although it's difficult to reflect when, when you don't have money, you don't have a job for the majority of people, uh, there is a problem because there's no food in the fridge. Um, you know, literally there's, there's, there's the fuck you, I don't want to reflect, I want to survive. Yet at the same time, for many that have food on the table, it is time to reflect and actually open the door for our next neighbor to actually allow them to eat as well, which is something that we haven't done as humans for a long time. Very true. Very true. So one of the things I, I really wanted to talk to you today was you did um, an Instagram story recently that talked through the, the mirror of denial, which I think really sort of underpins the journey that people go through to have those epiphanies, but also why they would escape away from them. And it's really through that gateway that you start to find your true leadership and, and who you are and who your true story is. And I wonder if you could just elaborate on that for me a bit, please. Yeah, the mirror of denial is really for an opportunity for a man to face the truth. And literally what I'm talking about this concept, I'm talking about in the context of men only. Uh, why? It may apply to women, but I just don't have any expertise to come in and have an opinion about what a mirror of denial may look like for a woman. Uh, because, uh, you know, number one, I do have a penis. You know. <laughs> that qualifies me for what I know. Uh, that's as simple as, as it gets. I, I don't, I can't sit here and say this applies to men and women. Maybe it does, but that would be for, another, for, for a woman to, to, to find out whether is, this is true for them or not. But so in that context, when you talk about a man facing the truth, typically what happens with men when they want to face the truth is uh, they will see what they want to see. Uh, they'll get vulnerable to a certain extent, but they will not go to the places uh, that you want them to go in a process of asking questions. So if you, I ask you a question, uh, you'll typically uh, give me an answer and that answer is a lie. Not because you want to manipulate me, uh, simply because that's the first level answer. And to some extent, there may be some truth to that answer. But as I go deeper and deeper, and I become more personal about the question, uh, the more there will be a resistance to that. And part of the resistance is just lying. And it's a self, self mechanism of protection against against men because men we don't trust other men because ultimately we're competing with the same resources we're competing for money resources and as well as females that's that's the nature of men so to trust another man is very difficult and it requires a process so unless your back is against the wall the truth doesn't really come out but let's assume that life such as COVID-19 puts your backs against the wall and now you are against the wall and you literally cannot deny anymore the truth and the truth comes out. And the truth is really this reflection of what you see in front of you. You don't see any other people, but you truly hold a mirror and you look at yourself and what you're able to see, you're able to accept both, you know, what you don't like and what you like, both what you may seem to judge yourself and what you may be proud of. Uh, in an instance, if you're able to accept that, uh, you're no longer deflecting your image in, a, in some kind of fantasy land. We are yeah. conditioned to deflect that in fantasy lands such as positive and negative. Um, so that's, that's the initial thought. We can go deeper into that, but I'm going to have you ask further questions so that I don't go and ramble on about the topic. For no, that's right. So, so typically in your experience, what, what sort of lies are people telling themselves? Just to uh, recognize 
the, the number one lie that a man would tell himself is truly what he wants, right? I mean, and, and I can only point the finger at myself uh, to give an example. I know so many other cases, but the best example is myself. So for years, what I was lying to myself was, I'm gonna deny my family, I'm gonna deny the love of my wife that I'm married with for 23 years and my children uh, for the pursuit of happiness somewhere else, which would be in the projection of success seen in money and as well as status in society. And so what that means is that I would work, work or label it as work, long hours in order to produce a life that I would say above and beyond securable for my family, right? So did we have food on the table? Yes. Was I able to produce? Yes. But what I wanted was a greater life. And that greater life was, was coming at the cost of disconnection and absence at home and with my family. And I didn't really know how to do, how to have this at the same time. I didn't know how to, how to work with the same intensity, the intensity in my business and then bring the same intensity at home. Because the lie that I would tell myself is I cannot put in 16 hours into my family and 16 hours to, into my business. And to some extent that was true because that's 32 yeah. hours and we only have 24 hours and we have to sleep some. But what I was missing on is that I can still be a producer and produce 16 hours a day, but I can bring the same intensity of my production at home. And the two hours or three hours that I have dedicated with my family, it's the same intensity that I could match, the same integrity and the same certainty that I would bring in at business at home. That's something I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to collapse time and acquire these components of it. And I had to learn that. And I had really had to learn that by the basics of truly working on habits initially. Then those habits became part of my character. And that, that part of my character became part of my belief system. And now it's part of my operating system. So it's been a very long journey. And uh, typically I was lying to myself that the biggest lie I was telling myself and that come to your question is, I don't know. I just don't know. I know what I know. That was the biggest lie. And in fact, I knew all I had to do was let down my guard and give myself permission to let go of the story that was keeping up my guard. No, I must be successful. You know, I have to work. This doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, this is for hippies the, the, you know, I don't need help. Uh, no one will tell me how to run my personal life. Uh, so many, so many obstacles and guards that we put on as men, especially as alpha men, to yeah. make sure that we come down to the, the conclusion that, okay, we got this. I got this. But the story of I got this didn't get me anywhere. Didn't get in anywhere and got me further disconnected from, number one, my family. As I got disconnected from my family, I got disconnected from others. I had a story that was a nice guy and I was, I was connected to others. But in reality, I didn't really give a shit about anybody else. And I, as because I didn't give a shit to anybody else, I couldn't really spiritually be connected to the man upstairs because it just the mathematical formula for what it makes sense. It wouldn't make sense that I'd be connected to the man upstairs and yet be disconnected to those around me. So I was exposed in my own reality of how I was operating as Sam the nice guy. Well, Sam yeah. the nice guy was operating as Sam the liar, which is Sam the lonely guy. And I wasn't a, a guy that was going out there and harming people but I wasn't certainly contributing anything into this circle of humanity that we have and we are living in today. It must've been quite a hollow existence when that realization came. It must've been yes. quite confronting. Yes, it was. And uh, truly when that happened, it's the, it's the changing moment. We talk about change and transformation. Uh, yeah. When it happened for me, I didn't recognize that this transformation was taking place. I didn't recognize that this change was in place. Looking back at it today inside of this conversation, I can look back and say nothing has changed. I didn't transform. I, I am exactly who I was. I, I, I just didn't see it. So we don't change. We don't transform. It's just different events and different periods in our time allow us to see uh, who we have truly been. And we have forsaken ourselves. We have forgotten about the true nature of who we are. And as we recognize pieces of pieces of it, we come closer and closer to this question that all of us have. Nobody has arrived at it, is who we are, why we are here, these questions that put us on this quest. Do you find um, over your experience of 
seen this happen with many other men that there's either a mix of it being a gradual thing or a real snap. It is, it is the over and over in proximity and also in distance that once a man truly recognizes the obstacle on his way and the obstacle on his way, it's nothing but a story that holds him where he's at. It's literally a story. Once a man recognizes and a shitty that, story at that. And once that's once once a man recognizes that's the story, and he chooses to let go, like the, the possibilities open up. But this cannot be forced. It's a true recognition moment by the man himself that this is a story that is holding me back. I cannot be preaching that. Nobody else can be talking about this. It, it won't have the impact. The impact happens once the recognition takes place and often recognition doesn't take place in some magical space. It's yeah. hey, you wake up and there is an idea that was incepted in your mind and you choose that, that idea is yours. The minute you choose that idea is yours. That's where everything changes. Um, so the work that we do is a constant inception of the possibility of eliminating that story that's holding you back. Yeah. It must be quite beautiful to be around when uh, this happens to men and all of a sudden cracks it, open. It's the reward of all the hard work that, uh, that you put in. It's the reward of, you know, truly caring and wanting to contribute. But it's also um, a recognition that uh, we cannot save anyone. You know, there's, there's this thing that we have inside of Wake Up Warrior that is, as harsh as it sounds, is like if a warrior chooses to die, he will die. Uh, yeah. We are not here to save anyone. And keeping that in mind at one extremity and, and witnessing the miracle that happens over and over, there's nothing more rewarding than that, at least for me, um, than anything else that I've done and uh, that I will continue to do. Yeah. I can imagine the, um, the, the sort of cracking open around your health and well-being, your relationships and your business is quite tangible because it's there. What is it like when somebody opens up to their bigger faith? Because that's something we don't really dive into, particularly here over in Australia. Well, that's what Wake Up Worry is all about. On the outside, yeah. it may look about business. And it, it may look to be about family. But truly, every single man that has come to, to a worry experience has had this divine moment and an encounter that is very personal uh, for him and, and the man upstairs. It's, it's a moment where you move away from information about God and you truly get into an encounter. Um, and this is, this is a magical moment. Uh, it is expected to happen at one point as we all truly listen, because none of us truly listen, right? We're so busy, we have so much stories, we have so much ideas, uh, but if we, we simply sit and listen and then trust what we are hearing and over and over and over, trust what we are hearing, we recognize that the only guru that we truly are is ourself and the guide into this journey is ourself. And so we created a tool here, at Warrior, called the stack. And uh, you have that in the book. And the stack is a conversation you have with yourself. Um, and these conversations with yourself opens the door and opportunity, particularly a series of questions a man will ask himself every single, every single day. And that opportunity opens a space for him to hear uh, his own voice, to hear guidance. Uh, and the more that guidance become visible and trustable to that man and the more certain he becomes around that, the more this bridge is created between anything that we fear, especially now, and, and fate, right? So we become the bridge between fear and fate. And there couldn't be a better moment and a better time right now to, to explore that because there's not a fucking moment that goes by that all of us don't fall apart in a little corner and then we repackage ourselves somehow. Like, mm. I don't care who you are. It could be the richest guy on the planet, or you could be the most confident guy on the planet. There are moments where you are collapsing by yourself alone in fear. And if you have the tools to repackage yourself, you carry on. This is a game of moment by moment. We don't even have the luxury of day by day. Um, and of course, there's going to be a lot of guys. Especially at the moment, yeah. Of course, there's going to be a lot of guys pretending that this is okay, that things will be okay. Uh, and, and it's good to think that way, but it's better to know. The only place you can know it's um, moment by moment. And what can you create in this moment? That's knowledge. Everything else is an assumption. That's strong. What, um, 
just taking it back to yourself, what are some of the things that, um, you know, these are extraordinary times. What are some of the things that even you're learning about yourself as we move forward in these uncertain and extraordinary times? Well, number one thing learning is we have idolized fame and power and we have associated that to leadership. That has been our biggest mistake as human. We have recognized leadership based on how much money you have and how famous you are. Mm. And that has been our biggest human mistake that we have all contributed to. Because in a time like this, when human momentum is on pause, you can see that many people that are actually wealthy, they are not here to lead at all. They have fired a bunch of people and they're living in the ranches and then basically hoping that the banks reopen and they can continue making some interest on, on this. Famous people, gone, powerless, nothing to suit, nothing to do, nothing to contribute, folded in pieces. And true leaders have risen. The janitor that is currently in, in, the, in the hospitals that has to make the choice every single day, do I go to work and do my work because my work matters? Versus if I go today to work, I may bring the disease to my family. That's a dilemma that a true leader is dealing with every single day. Those people are making daily decisions. The front line has demonstrated to be the leaders. Many spiritual leaders are there. Many people that are talking, many, many regular people that have chosen to turn on their camera and lead others and bring certainty every single morning into life of others. Not positive fucking attitude. No one wants a cheerleader. We are no. done with cheerleading. True certainty. So this moment, this period has exposed to us the meaning of leadership. And we can embrace this. The meaning of leadership is, is not how many followers you have or how many people follow you. The meaning of leadership is how many other leaders can you create? How many other leaders can you create by your action? And there couldn't be a better moment than today for us to do that. And as we do that, we have a common interest. Leaders are now leading and leaders, all of us, every man a leader, all of us have a common interest in leadership. Uh, and I hope this moment of reflection allows us to disconnect ourselves from the idea of having famous people and rich people to lead. I have nothing against famous people. I have nothing against wealthy people. I have everything to do with false leadership associated with them. And I will not sign up for that in my next, uh, in my next choices. There's a certain beauty at the moment about this situation. It's sort of the tide is coming out and those who have done the work are, are there and those that haven't have been pulled out with the tide. hundred percent. I mean, if you have been a guy that has been spiritually disconnected, um, I'm sorry, man, you're fucked at this point. If you've been a guy that's been lived in a dilemma of what is God, who, what do I listen to? You know, is this, this religion that if, if all that you've done is where you at right now, it's going to be a difficult time for you to lean. But in fact, at the same time, it may be the greatest time for you to find your spiritual path. Yeah. It, this has nothing to do with religion is exposed. Religion is exposed now. You can't go to church, you can't go to mosque, you can't go to synagogues, you can't go to your, to your temples anymore. Like the only temple you find to have right now, you are exposed, you and I are exposed. The only temple is demonstrated to be right here inside of your heart. Your heart center is your temple. And yeah. there is a, there's a unified energy here and it is a unified field among all of us where we have collapsed distance right now. The proof of it is this, this podcast right here between you and I miles away thousands of miles away and yet feels like we know each other for 30 years in this conversation why yeah. because we're both walking inside of a unified field where we're in that unified field like the only difference between you and i is that you i'm wearing black and you're wearing blue and red and you happen to be on the other side of the world that's the only difference when we truly embrace that and accept that we find ourselves to be in a very beautiful place and so part of spirituality is to believe in this unified field. Whether it's, uh, you know, you're religious, a Catholic or Muslim or Jewish or whatever beliefs that you have that brings you to this unified field, beautiful. But once you are in the field, we are all one. We yeah. are all one. There's a saying that says, you're either my brother in, in fate or you're my equal in humanity. And this is what we have to accept today. And for a long time, we have denied that. We've created these cliques and the circles. That if you live in this area and if you go to this church or if you go to this, to this mosque, then, then, then you're worth it. 
Other than that, you're not. All that has been exposed. There's nothing to argue against that. That's beautiful. Um, two last questions. One, um, and this is probably gives gives the readers an insight into the um, the core four and the daily daily work. What are you doing to keep yourself nice and grounded at the moment? Look, the 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 best advice I could have is the following. Without getting it and linking it to specifically what we do here at Warrior, just yeah. just overall as human, when you open your eyes in the morning, that's the opportunity to see. You have been given an opportunity to see. Where we were all when we were sleeping is the unknown. I mean, the greatest, the greatest uh, researcher on, on sleep, I forgot the name of the doctor, but he, this gentleman has studied sleep for years. And you open his book and, uh, <laughs> and the first note is, the thing about the sleep is that we don't know anything about it. Now, continue reading this book, right? So, <laughs> and that's the truth. Ultimately, we are, when you open your eyes, you are in this world. And which means yesterday, yesterday was just an easy day compared to what's going to happen today. If that's going to be your attitude, then as you open your eyes, you should really th be thinking the next five minutes how you're going to create your day. Will you create your day based on some random activities that you'll do without even thinking? Or can you put some thinking time aside? If you put this thinking time aside, I'm, I'm making it very simple. Get up, yeah. put 20 minutes of thinking time aside. You can do whatever you want in this thinking time. You can take off your shirt. You can put some oil on your nipple. You can hug your pillow. You can have your dog. You, you can do whatever you want. All I'm saying, all I'm recommending is put aside 20 minutes of thinking time. You will, you will see the magic of what your mind can create, the patterns and the habit and how you can actually construct your day, what you want, your desire. If you simply slow down and give yourself 20 minutes of thinking time, what I do personally, I wake up at 4.30 in the morning. And so from 4.30 to 8.30 is, is four hours blocked for me selfishly. Because if I, can give to my, if I cannot give to myself first thing in the morning, then I'm pretty much useless to everybody else. I cannot pour in from an empty cup. So my role when I wake up is to pour my cup. And when I pour my cup, then I have my day. Because I can pour from that cup into my wife, into my kids, into others. And so that's the attitude. Now, you don't have to do it four hours. Some people do it that much because that's important for me. That's the role. I've, but if you start with 20 minutes in your thinking, you'll discover 20 will become 40, 40 will become two hours. And you start discovering that it's not just thinking. It's about movement of the body. It's about spirituality and connection with God. It's about providing love to your loved ones. First thing in the morning, like you do these things and that's the core four that you're talking about you actually complete the portfolio of your life in each category, in your connection and spirituality, in the way you're thinking about production and business, in the way you take care of your body and the movement and what you're going to decide to put inside of your body, and in the way you connect with your loved ones and how you're gonna pour love into them first thing before anybody else. Uh, that's the practice of core four. The details is in the book, but uh, to answer your question, my, my personal advice would be start by 20 minutes of thinking every single morning. Superb. And the last question I ask all my guests on WA Real is if you could take a little nugget of information right now and upload it into the collective consciousness so everyone just gets it. You know, it's a bit like Neo in the Matrix. If you could just jam something in there so everybody gets it, what would that be right now? Stop fucking lying. Simple. Sam, it's been a, a true privilege to listen to you this morning. I've, um, like I said, I've been a big fan of the Wake Up Warrior and yourself for some time. And uh, despite the fact you're 15 um, hours behind and the other side of the world, you know, the impact goes all the way around the world. If people want to find you and the Wake Up Warrior, where did, where's the best place to come? Sure. Uh, you can find us at wakeupwarrior.com um, on Instagram or anything that you would type in with Wake Up Warrior. Uh, there's a specific podcast called warriorweeknow.com, which tells the story of 100 men plus that have kind of came into this experience. And you get to hear from them rather than, you know, from us. People get tired hearing from us. <laughs> I do want to thank you for, uh, for, for enabling this conversation. 
I'm available in the future if this happens to be another subject that we both want to explore. Um, you know, you're truly doing the work in the front line as well. It's exactly the same thing. That there's no difference in what you do and what we do and how we all do it is, is, uh, is the fact that we are here and we're dedicating some time. Listen, man, this past 30 minutes have been 30 minutes of your time, 30 minutes of my time. Like literally, you were not with your family. You were not with your kids. You were not with anybody else. You were here present 30 minutes. So was I. You matched it. I matched it. And that's exactly what it is. And, uh, you know, th this is the work of the front line. So I do want to appreciate the time and effort that you put in creating these podcasts and putting these voices out. Um, it's truly a work that is needed in, in today's uh, modern era. Thank you very much, Sam.